a familiar scene. The aircraft comes in. You do your job and you do your best to get the flight out again on time. Before you know it, there's another aircraft coming in and you start all over again. Routine. In a way, it makes things easier, but it's that very routine which can make us vulnerable to the most hazardous of ground service operations, fueling. like these, we're under a lot of pressure to get our job done. We're prone to forget that we're working in a complex and busy environment surrounded by thousands of liters of a highly flammable and explosive substance. One shortcut, a false move, a failure to glance over your shoulder could result in catastrophe. From the crude oil well site through the refinery and transportation to the aircraft, extreme care is taken to preserve the quality of aviation fuel. Let's look at the different types of aviation fuel and their characteristics. There are two main types, jet fuel, which is used in turbine and jet engines, and aviation gasoline, Avgas, which is used in piston engines. The flammability hazard of aviation fuels is evaluated by the flashpoint. That is, the temperature at which the fuel gives off sufficient vapors to form an ignitable mixture of fuel and air. Both Avgas and jet fuel are flammable, Avgas more so than jet fuel. If an ignition source is present and the fuel is at or above the flashpoint temperature, the vapor will flash. Any mixture of fuel and air that falls within the flammability ranges is explosive and will burn continuously once ignited. For fire to occur, each of these three components must be present. Oxygen, heat, and fuel. Remove any one and there can be no fire. How does this apply as we work around an aircraft being fueled? Well, we're in the open air, so oxygen is present. Fuel spills do occur. An ignition source, say a baggage truck, comes just a little too close. Fuel storage, the holding area for the airport's fuel. Quality is maintained by filtration systems. The underground storage tanks feed into the loading racks where the mobile fuel servicers take on more fuel. There are several ways in which the fuel is transferred to an aircraft. The hydrant system uses a fixed hydrant for the supply and a mobile hydrant servicer pumps the fuel into the aircraft. These mobile fuel services transport and transfer the fuel into the aircraft. The cabinet fueler is a self-contained fixed apron structure. Depending on the aircraft type, fuel is delivered either with a handheld nozzle over the wing or below the wing via a sealed connection with the underwing pressure nozzle for high flow transfer of jet fuel. Whatever the method, the flow of fuel is controlled by manual action of the dead man control in the fueler's hand. There are a number of safety features around the apron which, if not in place, may not require suspension of fueling, but must be brought to the attention of the corrective authority for immediate action. Emergency fire access gates and routes must not be obstructed by parked vehicles, equipment, or snow.
fire alarm boxes must be clearly marked and unobstructed. Emergency fuel system shutoff controls and spill control valves must be clearly marked and accessible. Portable fire extinguishers must be clearly marked, accessible, and in proper working order. When not in use, fuel cabinets should be left unobstructed by vehicles and equipment. Hoses should be reeled in and the cabinet securely closed. Hydrant pit covers must always be in place and free of parked vehicles and equipment. Apron surfaces should be kept free of fog. Gates and remote stands must be clearly marked and illuminated at the appropriate times. Aircraft lead-in lines, taxiways, and vehicle corridor lines should always be clearly visible. And remember, aircraft always have right-of-way over any other vehicle. An aircraft should be approached only when it has achieved a full stop. The engines are shut down and the anti-collision beacon is off. Approach to the aircraft should be made while gradually reducing speed and simultaneously testing the brakes. Auxiliary power units may be operated during fueling, provided their location relative to the fueling process does not constitute an ignition hazard. If fuel vapor fumes are evident, the APU must not be shut down in order to avoid flashback from the exhaust. The most important step in preparation for fueling is the bonding of the fuel servicer to the aircraft. This ensures that the aircraft and fuel source are electrically neutral with respect to each other. In so doing, any static electricity charges, which could cause a spark, are eliminated. Mobile fuel servicers must be parked so that they can be promptly moved after fueling is completed, and they should be situated in such a way as to not restrict other activities or obstruct movement of personnel in and out of the aircraft. Until fueling is completed, there should be at least one person at the fuel servicer, unless it is parked safely away from ignition sources. If suitable bonding connections are not available, potential static charges may be eliminated by touching the fuel nozzle to a convenient metallic surface on the aircraft. The nozzle should then remain in constant metal-to-metal -metal contact throughout the fueling operation. During overwing fueling, the propulsion or pumping engine of the fuel must not be situated under the wing. While fueling or after filler caps are removed, ground power units must not be connected or disconnected. Generators like these must be kept at least three meters from fueling points, vents, and fueling equipment. Hot refueling with passengers on board or near the aircraft is prohibited under Air Regulations Section 540.1. Remember, in any fueling operation, bonding must be done before fueling begins. Except for fueling vehicles, no other vehicle passes under or parks beneath the wings. Highly flammable vapors are present at the fuel vents, and running engines pose a hazardous ignition source. 
Open flames, flash bulbs, and similar devices are not permitted on the apron. Fuel personnel should be issued fire retardant uniforms of a non-static generating material like 100% cotton. They must not carry lighters, matches, or wear footwear with exposed iron or steel studs, nails, or tips. All vehicles other than those performing service operations are not permitted within 15 meters of an aircraft during fueling. As well, equipment with metal wheels or chains must observe this 15-meter limit. Fueling operations shall be suspended when there are lightning discharges within 8 kilometers of the airport. Fuel hoses and bonding wires must be disconnected from the aircraft. And at all times, you should be aware of the location of firefighting equipment. Yes, it does happen, a fuel spill. Sometimes they're minor and the fueling personnel can deal with it, but this one is serious. Spill response rests with the fueler and the priority action is to stop the flow of fuel by releasing the dead men control, shutting down the pumping system and notifying the company, the aircraft crew and emergency response personnel. Airport and airline duty managers must be notified immediately. For a major spill, the airport firefighting equipment is brought to the scene. How should you respond to a situation like this? If you're the first to see a spill occurring, advise the appropriate authority. Follow directions. Report if necessary. On no account should any vehicle be moved. Do not start or shut off any engine. Avoidance of backfiring or ignition source is critical. All unnecessary APU loads are to be removed. Fire extinguishers are placed upwind as a warning sign to others. A spill is considered to be minor if it is less than five square meters and not of a continuing nature. It is considered to be major if it is greater than five square meters and of a continuing nature. Minor fuel spills do not necessarily warrant the same response as a major spill. Though a small spill can become a major concern when the fuel mixes with water during a rainfall or in clement weather. These conditions can cause it to travel faster. Any involvement on the part of the airport operator in the spill cleanup may result in costs being charged back to the primary polluter. When it is safe to do so, the appropriate authority will notify ground crews that they may resume their work. Accidents like these are not only costly and potentially hazardous, but they pose serious environmental consequences as well. Aviation fuels are toxic. They can remove natural oils from the skin and cause dermatitis. Disposal should always be done in accordance with the appropriate environmental regulations. Spills and leaks release pollutants into the air, land, water and subsurface. They contaminate airport property and possibly adjacent properties, which results in damage to the natural environment and wildlife habitat. Safe fueling practices, combined with properly maintained equipment, ensure safety for the people who work with and around the fuel. It may not be your job to fuel the aircraft, but it is your responsibility to keep your wits about you when working around aviation fuel. If you should notice anything which does not comply with safe fueling procedures, speak up. You may report to the fuel company, duty manager, 
fire, safety, security, or environmental personnel. As many details as possible should be provided, such as the time and date of your observation, type of aircraft and the owner, the location, and a brief description of the occurrence. Flight safety. This is not something to be looked after only in the air. It has to be maintained everywhere, from flight crews to air traffic control to ground service crews. Our jobs, our equipment, and our lives depend on it.